Okay, so today's, it comes with a warning. You will never be able to go to a mall or shopping or market or any group of people and not see something different. Okay, it's, it's gonna be really, really cool. So this is like investigation. When you look at the brain, the brain is like a battery and it gets its charge from the position of motion of the vertebrae. This is why first thing, no matter what anybody has, like if you think, oh, they have high cholesterol. Okay, what's cholesterol? It's 50% of the weight of the brain. It's a precursor to every hormone you make. It's vital for your body. And so it's important that your body produces that. What's a normal blood pressure? I'm gonna demonstrate on you. I'm gonna stand on your foot. Now what's more? It better be higher, okay? So the, the, all of these values are insane to think that everybody should have the same blood pressure, same blood sugar, because it's based on your perception of the environment. And the brain gets its charge from the position and motion of these vertebrae. That's when you start with the nervous system. Because if this is an imbalance, it, this controls digestion. It can make it good or poor. It controls the immune system. The immune system is expensive. So if you're in a resting state, the immune system works. Sleep pattern, that's when your body regenerates. Everything is altered. So good motion is good brain stimulation or brain communication. Because your brain is always gonna respond correctly based on the input. Bad motion gets bad stimulation. Am I going too fast? No, no, it's, it's like, dude, come on. Okay, so when you're looking at someone, I want you to look at them, okay? If a person's standing like this, okay, you can see I obviously have no neck. Okay, no, it's because my shoulders are tight. Every day I'm working like this. Okay, you'll see contractors and things like that. When I'm standing, you're going to see my head's basically in the middle, and you're seeing my thumbs. If you start to see someone the back of the hands off to the side, or somebody like we were talking about this morning, standing like this. I know it looks badass, but I'm actually dropping my pelvis. I'm repositioning my shoulder. I'm dropping my left shoulder. My head's gone forward. And so I'm not badass, I'm uncomfortable. Okay, now my, my history, I've broken my right knee twice, my left one once, fractured my sternum, Broke my right foot mountain biking, my left one slide into a paintball. So, you know, I made it through 63 years with minimal trauma. Okay, but when you look at this, we've got to look at the brain. And I'm going to show you some basic gates on how people walk, aside from body posture. If they're standing talking to you and they're normal or standing normal, their body's in harmony. If their body's not in <coughs> harmony, you know that it's a clue to an automatic dysfunction, okay? Or an automatic nervous system adaptation, and that's the key. Because high blood pressure, type two diabetes, bowel disorders, uh, anxiety, stress, or depression, none of these are problems. They're all the body adapting. So I'm gonna show you some really cool gates. Okay, hemi and di. Hemi means one side dye means two. Cerebral gate and neuropathic gate. Now, when you look at why we're going to look at this. Let's say, and this is how you create your own world. First, you have, a, have to have a vision. When you're 90, do you want to be playing pickleball, giving advice to your great grandkids, having a sharp brain and body? Good vision. I like it. Or would you like to be in a, having a full time nurse drooling on your navel? with a ton of drugs. That's a, that's a vision too. Okay, so let's say you wanna be healthy when you're 90 and 100. What's the purpose of that? So you can give back. It's not to be selfish, okay? To just say, I want a healthy body. It's like love. Love's the one thing that you can't hold on to. You only get it if you give it away. Okay, so the purpose of that vision is to be healthy but also to be an example to your family, friends, and yourself, and to, to honor the body that, that you've been given. So who do you have to become to get that? And this, this is something that works in business, life, everything. So you got a vision of a good relationship, what's the purpose of that, to get lucky regularly, okay, to, you know, 
Uh, and who do you have to become? You have to become a decent person. So, you know, it's whatever is there. So we're going to go over how to recognize gate alteration. But remember, that brain is a battery. It gets its charge from the position and motion of the vertebrae. So if you have abnormal position, you're getting abnormal stimulation 100% of the time. So, so when you're walking, and this is, we give exercises to everybody. So if we're adjusting the spine or correcting that communication, we have everyone do a leg swinging. And what most of you have experienced is when you start doing the leg swinging, we'll put an ankle weight on, it might be hard to keep it even. And that's only because if you've had past trauma, that brain is gonna to adapt to that. Now, one of the, the, the revolutionary ideas that changed my brain is I was teaching human dissection and I taught it on and off for about eight years. I was slicing, taking the brain and doing coronal sections, kind of like this. And this neurologist, chiropractic neurologist was walking by. And when I did a slice, he looked at the brain and said that person had a lower left limb dysfunction. And at the, all the cadavers, they were in stainless steel containers. You couldn't see. But sure enough, I took it out of somebody with a lower left limb amputation that had healed. So think of that. If that alteration and stimulation can literally change the neurons in the brain, where this guy from five feet away could see it, what does movement do? That's why we have everybody move symmetrically. And then if, it, if there's a problem with memory or, or, or any type of brain function, we have you tap something with your feet. And how many people have seen an improvement? You know, everybody does. You know, don't talk about the golf game. Although everyone's going to love it. Okay. So when you're walking, the arm should be swinging up. The feet should be pointing straight. Can you see the feet? Okay, good. Okay, now you'll notice, no, my shoes aren't like this because my dad was an orangutan, okay? Okay, they give full range of motion. If you see the, sh the hands going inward, okay, that means there's tight pecs or there's a problem in the middle of the back where the guy's rounding over, okay? If the head is forward, so that means normally an ear should be in a line. If you see the head forward like this, it means they're trying to get information into the they're having a problem with what's called proprioception. So, and you'll see this in autism, Parkinson's, all sorts of damage. If you see a teenager, because human beings should be walking straight with symmetrical movement, where they're going to be walking, the head's going to be level, but the arms should be moving in a consistent fashion. If you start to see one arm swinging more than the other, or off to the side, or worse yet, when you see normal human beings walking like this, and you see a teenager walking like this, that's brain damage. It means there's a hypertonic state. They're not just running around. Now, most children, when they're first born, in fact, all children have flat feet. And you'll see when they're first starting to work, their brains aren't fully formed. So they'll walk on their tiptoes, and they're trying to balance. And that's normal. It's not normal for a teenager. And since we're injecting a lot of neurotoxins in kids' brains, that's called a vaccination. It's a ridiculous procedure. But in America, 72 doses of 17 different vaccines, I know 18 would be better. Okay, no, that's foolishness. You can't do one drug therapy for everyone. It's like if everybody in here has high blood pressure, do we give everybody a diuretic? That's foolishness. Mm -hmm. So look at the gate. If somebody's feet are pointing out, that means they're having trouble balancing. If they're pointing in, it could mean a pelvis or hypertonic state. When you see damage from birth, what happens, some of the muscles get tight and short and they can't stretch so there's lots of flexibility. And what are ligaments, tendons, that, and what are they composed of? They're composed of amino acids. So if you have poor production, everything gets tight. And so you'll see contractures on both sides, and you'll see somebody walking like this. And it's actually called a scissors gait. And you can see this was cerebral palsy or lack of oxygen at birth. One of the kids I worked on at Bamboo School was born deaf-blind with cerebral palsy. 
and getting him adjusted changes that input. He still can't walk correctly, but at least he can sit up. When you're looking at a hemiplegia, it means half of the body. Typically, you're going to see this side get um, contracted and the leg get extended. Now, if there's damage to this, and you'll see this again, you'll see somebody walking like this, where the foot goes in a circle because mm. they can't lift the foot up. <clears throat> and you've seen this, but now, not just this, because this is obviously if the right side's affected, it obviously has to do with the left part of the brain. Okay, and you'll see them walking around and you can say, wow, yeah, that person had a stroke. Brains can regenerate. But if the people that are helping this person that had that half of the brain stroke or hemi hemiplegic, it, it's, if they don't understand that the brain can regenerate, they're not gonna give them cross-crawl activities. But that's full blown, that's easy to see. You can see that 100 meters away. But what about people just like this? Okay, or people that are not moving one side, or they have an alteration in where the hip is coming because they can't lift their foot. Okay, all of those, when you start to see that there's going to be a variation in how the person's walking, what does that do to the pelvis? If you're walking crooked, does the pelvis have to move more or, or more? I know, I'm only giving you one choice, so it's going to be really, really easy. Everybody is saying, well, what, what's in the pelvis? In half of the rest digestive repair. So if this person is walking, okay, crooked or, or odd, abnormal, if they have a high stepping gait, and you'll see this as well, where they're walking, you can call, where they have one side where they can't lift the foot, if they're seeing both sides, that's going to be brain damage. So all of these alterations in movement, if it's not identified, and this is why you have a duty, with knowledge comes responsibility. If you see a relative walking crooked, that is damage to their central nervous system. If they've had a broken leg, you know, this one twice, this one once, I know what broken legs are like, okay? You have to alter your gait. You have to change the brain. What's weird is, even though I fractured my legs by getting run over by a car 30 years ago, and you, you can't see a change in my gait now, it's equal. Mm. When I get fatigued, this leg gets stiffer. And I start walking like this. Mm. And that's only when I get fatigued. So when we see damage to the brain, which is what you're seeing there, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type two diabetes, this is a brain that is adapting to a stress response. Those are not diseases, they're adaptations. So when I see that, we get them on cross crawl exercises. If I, we have somebody with hip damage, you can fix the hips. You can see regeneration of the cartilage. You can see the disc regenerating, but you gotta change the brain. Because if they've been walking crooked, we get them to start lifting their legs up like they're marching in place. Mm -hmm. And what you'll see is they'll lift this one and, I, and I'll tell them, no, 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 they both got to come up to the same height. And this gets both halves of the brain to fire. That's why the position and motion of the vertebrae, but also the legs. This is why every time you get adjusted, what do we say? You got to go walking barefoot in the grass or hard sand. Now it turns out that the foot is a good design. I know you're going to say, wow, I've never heard somebody say such common sense. Uh, no, it is. It is a good design. That, but that's why they're running marathons now barefoot. They're finding out that shoes are fantastic, particularly ones that give full range of motion. Mm -hmm. But if you're walking in a shoe, can I borrow one of yours? Sure. OK, good, 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 good. Thanks. If you're walking in a shoe that has a thicker heel, when you're walking, and you jam that heel into the ground, if you don't have a pad, it's gonna hurt. If you have a pad, it's not gonna hurt. And they'll even teach you to walk like this. And I don't know if you can hear that, but that force loop is translated up in. So when you have a normal foot, 
it hits on the heel and rolls on the outside and then goes and then pushes off. So the foot is going in, in a almost a rotation to absorb the shock from just walking on the earth. That's pretty cool. So when you switch to normal shoes, it may take a while to work into it, but this is also going to correct bunion formation, um, uh, calluses, you're going to see everything. Morton's neuroma, all the little foot pathologies get corrected by correcting the gait. Now, you're going to see a lot of people, particularly after a lot of the medications and things, that slap their feet because they can't feel. This is why Parkinson's, when you see a person with Parkinson's, they want very little and they're moving. Okay, it's called a festive gate, but that movement generates dopamine. Can you imagine how crazy it is to have somebody that's generating dopamine like this and they give a drug to stop it? Will that help the brain or harm the brain? This is why all Parkinson's drugs cause, you're right, Parkinson's. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it's just, it doesn't make sense. If you have a damage to the brain and you know the brain has neuroplasticity where it can regenerate, to not take advantage of the body's ability to regenerate is foolishness. So look at the gait, make sure it's even, identify different pathologies, identify different gates, and going to the mall will be a whole different experience. Any questions? Okay, and also too, if you do see any of that in, in relatives or friends, the simplest thing in the world is to get them to walk barefoot in the grass or sand. Because they're going to get a lot of stimulation, they're going to actually work it with the body, you know, correctly, and they're going to get more input into the brain. And you'll see bunions go away, you'll see everything change right away. <laughs> any other questions? Okay, couple of Thank you very much.